So the knock on the Minnesota Fighting Vikings veteran left tackle Riley Reef is that he's perfectly average or even slightly below average. He's always like the 15th or 16th uh, best left tackle in the league, but that's fine. Like you can win with that. It's better than Matt Khalil. Uh, and he's just this uh, quintessential Iowa left tackle, meat and potatoes, just perfectly bland, like boiled pork chop with no seasoning, uh, like Karen's bland ass potato salad with no paprika, no paprika, really. But then, obviously, uh, if the Vikings can get out from underneath his contract, he was not going to be worth that $10.9 million base salary that he was due this season. Hence, uh, the pay cut ultimatum. It was not a restructure. Uh, the $5 million pay cut, it was justified, right? And also, uh, Reef isn't average in that he just plays average the whole time. Like, it's always up and down. It's always uh, all over the place. So, Reef will play well against trash competition and then wilt against good competition. It's very much uh, uh, an analogy for the way that the Vikings uh, have rolled lately. Uh, in the last year, 30, uh, last season, 32 of his six, uh, 32 pressures, six sacks, exactly half of them. So 16 pressures, three sacks uh, were in the Vikings' biggest games of the season. Both Packer games at Chicago, which was a gotta get it done. And of course, the divisional round game uh, against San Francisco when Nick Bosa basically just ate his lunch. It was just like, and I, I will drink your milkshake too. Right. Uh, but mad respect for what the former Hawkeye has done this season. A uh, Vikings offensive line has been a problem. They've had their issues, but number 71, Captain Riley Reef, he ain't one of them. Uh, Reef has only allowed one pressure, Un, Anthony Peeler, and zero sacks, Cero, uh, through three games, as well as he's had zero penalties after career high nine last season. Uh, also, his 76.2 PFF pass blocking grade is the highest of his Vikings career. Now, the, the zero penalty things, so. The false start uh, that he, uh, that Brian O'Neill had in the first game probably could have called that pretty easily on Riley Reef, as well as since the league is going YOLO on offensive lineman holding, that's part in there as well. Uh, could help contribute to uh, you know, why he's performing well. But again, that's league wide. Like every single team is getting that advantage. And also, uh, Reef is performing well, and it's not like he's going up against a bunch of slappies. So week one, Green Bay, Preston, Zadarius Smith, uh, and also Rashawn Gary, zero pressures allowed. This after Reef had been a sieve uh, against uh, the Packers in both matchups last season, allowing six pressures. Week two, Justin Houston, he of the formerly had 22 sacks, leading the league fame, right? And he got zero pressures uh, against Riley Reef on 23 snaps. Now, the half sack Houston did get, he was lined up on the right side of the offensive line. That wasn't Riley Reef's fault. Uh, week three, had Harold Landry, the pride of Boston College, plus Jadavion Clowney, plus uh, the corpse of Vic Beasley coming in, uh, and uh, uh, Landry and Clowney and Beasley com combined for 11 total pressures, but only Un, one of them, came against Riley Reef. So it's not like he's playing Little Sisters of the Poor. He's actually doing extremely well against pretty solid competition, and, and he better because Week Four uh, against Houston, I mean, uh, Whitney Merciless rushing from the right side, right uh, outside linebacker spot is no joke. Uh, JJ Watt tends to play over on the left side uh, of the defense. He's more of a defensive tier anyway, but uh, 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 semantics aside. Uh, uh, but also, hey, congrats, Reef. Congrats, Riley Reef, being a team captain uh, after a monster deal, even after a pay cut. You're playing the way that you're supposed to do. What you want, a cookie? But, yeah. Uh, and frankly, you know, Reef is off to one of the best starts uh, of his career, pass blocking wise. Run blocking is grading, not really that great, but uh, I think a lot of that is lack of opportunity the first two weeks, frankly. Uh, week three, Dalvin, the run game looked phenomenal, buck 81, career high. So, um, you know, sample size comes into play. But overall, you, you can't discount the motivation that he got from that pay cut because he, he, you would think Riley Reef, prideful dude, is like, you're coming to me. You're coming to me, man. You're, you're trying to mess up my money. And then remember, he had a full day where he didn't show up to practice. And then his agent was calling around. Hey, Eagles. Hey, other. Hey, hey Chargers. Hey, other teams' offensive line issues. How much you want to pay my client? You would give him less than what his pay cut's going to be. Okay, click, click. And then he came back to the Vikings, and he's got a chip on his shoulder. He, he does. And also, you, you think that Riley Reef throughout his career, he's basically been like pampered and put on a pedestal. So Lions drafted him in the first round, 2012. He was the sec. Uh, he was one of two offensive tackles taken in the first round of the 2012 draft. Guess who the other one was? Cool. All right. So Riley came in left tackle of the future for the Lions. They moved him over to the right tackle his final season, but it didn't hurt him at all because the Vikings just like 
smacked him in the face with a sack of cash and they're just like hey we understand that you got demoted and you got switched over right tackle last year hey take all of this money become one of the highest paid left tackles in the league at the time uh, and then uh, be our left tackle uh, just just cool uh, he does turn 32 next year and I-, I think it is pretty unlikely that the Vikings will pay him his 11.65 million dollar base salary when none of it is guaranteed so the Vikings could free up 11.7 million in cap space and I don't see it happening especially if if they do have an eye of moving Ezra Cleveland eventually to left tackle full time, which I think would be smart. So essentially, Riley Reef is a contract year and just competency at the left tackle spot. I mean, that still has a premium. And Riley Reef is going to be relatively youngish adjacent where he can go cash in on another decent payday somewhere else. Help, maybe even here. You just never say never uh, with the team, I guess. And also, I mean, the Vikings have just been looking for decent, just decent. Like, you don't have to be lights out. Like, you don't have to be Anthony Munoz, uh, prime Tony Baselli back there. Just be decent uh, ever since Matt Khalil left. That's all we need. And Riley Reef has been that at times. He's definitely doing that right now through three games, so respect. Uh, you know, Reef is getting it together, and uh, hopefully it's a good sign for the Vikings offensive line going forward. Now just figure out the guard stuff. So that is all. So Riley Reef off to the best start of his career. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support that work? Post on the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.